Hello, my name is Gareth Young and I'm a postdoctoral research fellow on the vSense project at Trinity College Dublin and I'm here to present our paper, a case study on the use of volumetric video in augmented reality for cultural heritage. In this brief presentation, I'm going to introduce our exploratory case study on a musicologically focused AR application. I'll cover our methodological approach and the analysis of our findings. I'll then touch upon the limitations of our study and I'll contextualize our findings in further applications for cultural heritage. As many of you know, augmented reality is growing in popularity and is proving to be a convenient for many different applications. By harnessing the various integrated sensor technologies of emergent AR tech, new applications can easily be run on commercially available devices, such as tablets, smartphones, and head-mounted displays. AR is proving to be particularly valuable in cultural heritage applications as it can be used to reconstruct previously lost environments. It can be used for curation and storytelling, and it is proving to be effective at highlighting specific elements of interest within museums. Each technique for AR content creation has both advantages and disadvantages. For example, computer-generated characters can feel uncanny or unnatural, and can require high budgets for accurate reproductions. Motion capture, on the other hand, offers some compromises. However, the requirement to wear markers creates other hurdles for content creators and the actors being recorded. For these reasons, we focus our current research on volumetric video. Volumetric video is also known as 3D video or free viewpoint video, and it is created using real life live action video footage. VV reconstructs a 3D scene by placing multiple cameras around an object or person. The number of cameras used can vary, but the scene is always simultaneously recorded from multiple angles and a sequence of 3D models is generated with bespoke 3D reconstruction techniques. This allows the reconstructed video to be viewed from multiple angles with six degrees of freedom. Here you can see an example of this process with regards to the capture in a green screen studio, the reconstruction of a mesh, texturing of this mesh onto the 3D model, and its reproduction as an AR application. In line with our current project goals, we wanted to explore new methods for enriching visitor experiences on location in the long room of the old library at Trinity College Dublin. The old library is one of Ireland's biggest tourist attractions and holds thousands of rare and very early printed books and special collections. To achieve this, Adjacent to the bust of Dean Jonathan Swift, we reconstructed a 3D model of Swift as a VV character. Here's a video of the VV experience. Jonathan Swift here. That's Dean Swift to you. I say, name me a book that has never been out of print in 290 years. <laughs> I'll tell you. Gulliver's Travels written by yours truly in the city of Dublin in 1726. I was a student in Trinity College in 1692. Good Lord, things were very different in those days, I can tell you. <laughs> Once I had to beg the senior dean's pardon on my knees in public for going into the city without permission. My Class marks weren't great either, I admit. Uh, bad for philosophy, uh, negligent in theology. However, I was well known for keeping a good fire, for good company and great conversation. The main contributions of this particular paper are to present a comparison of the effects of AR devices on perceived quality comparing a tablet device with a HMD, and to report on the formative, quantitative and qualitative analysis of the different parameters affecting our users' experiences. As a formative pilot study, we invited members of the TCD faculty to experience the VV reconstruction of Swift as he delivered an anecdotal, educational and light-hearted story of his experiences at TCD. We then measured and compared the technologies used via fixed questionnaires and open-ended questioning. The quantitative analysis measured the quality of the application, visual quality of the representation and audio clarity, the intensity of technical errors, and the user's preferences. 
The results show that the overall experience for this application was rated as good by all the participants, that the overall rating of the quality of the representation was also good, and that the audio clarity was considered as excellent. When comparing devices, the visual quality of the representation for both platforms was rated as good, and there was no statistically significant difference in the perceived quality between the two devices. The intensity of technical errors showed that there were a few notable disturbances experienced, but some of these problems were somewhat expected concerning losses in audio-visual synchronization and the loss of scene tracking due to the current technological limitations of the application. Overall, the majority of users expressed a preference for the HMD as it was created a qualitatively immersive experience that we'll discuss shortly. The qualitative open-ended responses explored topics of visual quality, technological limitations, and the topic of immersion. Regarding the visual quality of Jonathan Swift's representation, the participants revealed that they like it, but it needs to improve. And similarly, overall responses towards the character's quality were mostly positive, but a number of artifacts detracted from the overall experience. Regarding the technical limitations, the participants commented comments highlighted the shortcomings of the technology they were asked to use. Particularly, this concerned pixelization, synchronization of playback, field of view, and real-world scene tracking. With references to immersion, the AR application was successful in presenting the participants with an overall quality immersive experience. The participants also mentioned that a personal conversation with a very lifelike figure of Swift was had. And as one particular participant stated, it feels very compelling and that it feels real enough for a good experience. Some criticisms to immersion were noted due to the representation of Swift being pre-recorded, particularly as the model doesn't track you and Swift is looking at one point in space. It was suggested that the users would feel more immersed if the location was tracked with Swift's gaze and it, he followed them around the library. The limitations of our research concern the volumetric video and our explorative methodologies. Although VV enables the capture of real-life 3D content, the technology still has some restrictions, as was openly pointed out by our participants, such as the lack of interaction and the reconstruction and visualization techniques that were used. These findings are also somewhat hampered by the more obvious limitations of our pilot study approach. In our formative case study, We've presented a use case experiment that serves to evaluate a prototype cultural heritage VV AR application. The results show that although the overall quality of the application was found to be good for this particular application, further experiments are needed to validate our findings and the use of VV in AR. This factor was particularly important for our users when regarding immersion and interactivity. To fully address these current limitations, we plan on conducting a larger and more robust field study during the old library's regular working hours and to explore the specific question, is VV the best representation technique for cultural heritage orientated augmented reality applications? Other aspects will also need to be explored in relation to the long time use of VV applications in order to control for novelty and exploring new and emergent AR devices in actual practice. Unfortunately, Due to the impact of COVID-19 on tourism in Ireland, further user studies that are targeted at visitors to the library are in jeopardy. However, due to the nature of volumetric video, we can reimagine the experience of visiting this cultural heritage site using virtual reality instead. In virtual reality, we can reconstruct the library using photogrammetry and place Dean Swift in the same location. However, this fundamentally changes the impact of site-specific cultural heritage and augments it into a different experience altogether. We hope that we can continue to explore the possibility of capturing user experiences of volumetric video in augmented reality for cultural heritage in the near future, but until then, we will continue to work with cultural heritage sites to provide further support to this industry during these very troubling times. For more information about the Trinity Long Room Mixed Reality Project featuring Jonathan Swift, please visit the vSense website and feel free to check out our other creative experiments while you're there, such as the Mixed Reality Play Trilogy, Image Technology Echoes, and Mixed Reality Ulysses. Thank you for listening and I look forward to hearing your questions.